January. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. I'm trying to change up the way I'm doing some things on the channel. So this is actually going to be a two part video. Well, I probably could have found a better place to stop, but this won't be two parts. You'll see. Um, I'm going to start the look here for my March babies. And then I'm going to transition over to finish the look in another video. Because you're going to get two for the price of one this week. Um, but I do want to make sure I get this done for my March babies. I'm still kind of under the weather. I have been sick for like a week and a half now at this point. Let's go ahead and jump into this look. Um, I'm also not going to be telling you guys exactly um, which products I'm using as I'm doing it. I'm just going to put a little pop-up um, on the side, whichever side I have the most space on, of what the product is. So, And I'm definitely going to leave the links down below. Most of my products I get from Ulta or either the beauty supply store. So I don't really order them directly from the vendor unless it's like a, a less well-known brand but um i'm gonna leave the links down below to the actual brand for you guys so that you can uh, go and order the products yourself if now i will say for this march look i had a hard time figuring out what i was going to do because this aquamarine is so pretty one i wanted to make sure i do it justice and two because there's more than one stone for March. So I found the aquamarine stone, but then I also found the bloodstone. So I was like, do I wanna just do regular aquamarine or do I wanna do the bloodstone, which has more colors? And ultimately I decided on the bloodstone because um, I love the red, the pop of red in it. Um, and I love the variations of color that are in the bloodstone and I just felt like the aquamarine was kind of flat. So I'm gonna do a bloodstone for you guys for my March babies. If you didn't know, now you know March has two uh, birthstones. Also, while I am doing this, because it is March, I am also going to be doing kind of like a talk through with you guys as I'm doing this. Um, March is, not only, you know, it's the third month of the year, duh, but it's the end of the first quarter. So for me, you know, I'm all about goals in 2020 and um, all about hitting milestones and really making 2020 everything for me. So um, as it is the end of the first quarter, I want to just take you know, kind of like a, a, a role of where I'm at in life. I wanna take a little, you know, account for where I'm at, how I'm doing on my goals, everything. Um, let me know down in the comments if you do this, if you kind of just do like a, a review of where you are so far at any point throughout the year to make sure that you are hitting your goals and staying on target and everything. With this, I'm reviewing and kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? So I'm review, reviewing and really taking um, everything into consideration of where I'm at, how I'm doing on my goals, and if I need to change anything. And with me reviewing everything and seeing if I need to change anything, I'm really taking a step back and looking at all of my relationships. And really looking at, and I don't mean like romantic relationships. I mean like friends, associates, people that um, I might have working relationships with. But I'm really taking a look at all of that to make sure that those are beneficial as well. Because if you're not beneficial to me at this point in my life, then what's the point? And I'm not saying use people, I'm not saying that I use people, but a beneficial relationship is beneficial to you, not financially, but beneficial, are they pouring into you as much as you're pouring into them? Are they loving on you? Are they a part of your village? Can you count on them in times of need? If you just need a shoulder to cry on, if you just, you know, you need somebody to talk to, can you just call on that person? If things start to go south, is that somebody that you can 
you know, really look to for guidance. That's what I mean by beneficial. And I find that you don't really have so many of those people in your life. You know, you get a couple here and there, and those are the people that you should really hold on to. But you don't get a lot of those people in your life where you can really say, that person is family to me, or that person is as much to me as I am to them. You don't get a lot of those people in your life. So, in the first quarter is, you know, when I start to really review, it's after my birthday. So, if you watch my birthday vlog, you know, I just had a birthday. I just celebrated my 33rd birthday. And really taking a step back and look at the people who I was surrounded with at that time. Um, because birthdays are important to me. Birthdays are very important to me. And they're important to me because that's when you celebrate you. That's when you celebrate the person that you are. And people should be celebrating you because they're happy that you are the person that you are. And they're happy to have you in their lives. Um... So birthdays are a big deal to me. It's the one day, the one time where you can really show out and be, you know, like, this is about me. I tend to put more emphasis on other people than I do myself. So I'm that person that I really enjoy putting that one day on me. You know, that one day is time for me to celebrate. Naisha. Um, and I feel like everybody should have that one day. If you don't celebrate birthdays for whatever reason, whether it be, you know, religious or cultural or what have you, you know, you still need that one day just to be about you and it be uninterrupted. It needs to be just about you, not anybody else, not anybody else trying to make it about them, not anybody else trying to take over and make the situation what they want it to be, but just allow you to be you and allow everyone to celebrate you in that moment um so yeah just celebrating my 33rd birthday so taking account of the people that were around me in that time and who helped me celebrate me in that moment um really taking a look at that and who those people were and what they brought to the table at that time so now this is going to get into the part about why I don't have a lot of friends. If you watched my birthday vlog, then you notice that I didn't have a lot of people there at, at my birthday celebration. In any part of my birthday celebration. You also, you know, you heard me talk because I did talk through, you know, I talked in some of the... the the frames. You heard me talk about the people that were most important, which was my son, of course. Um, but you notice I didn't have a lot of people around me. I don't have a lot of friends because people be fake. That's pretty much <laughs> the gist of it. Like, people really be fake. And taking the time out around this time of year to really see, hey, I invited a lot more people than what actually showed up. And I'm not saying that the people that didn't come that was invited are fake. That's not what I'm saying because people have other stuff to do. And I understand that. I get that. I respect that. And you don't owe me any explanation about why you could or could not come. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, you know, if you couldn't come... Or you couldn't take the time out to be there for me, to celebrate me, celebrate our friendship or, you know, family ship, whatever you want to call it. Um, that says a lot. Um, because there were people that didn't come, didn't give an explanation about why they didn't come, didn't even bother to RSVP. Nor did they take the time out to tell me happy birthday at all on my actual birthday. So those those are the situations that I'm saying are fake. 
you know. And those are the people that you, you need to leave behind. Because those, those are the people that I have definitely left behind at this point. Um, I feel like sometimes we hold on to situations just for the sake of holding on to the situation because we've been friends for X amount of years or we have so much history together or they was there for certain times in our life. But since that time, they haven't really, really proven themselves to be loyal or beneficial at all since that point. So what's the point of holding on to the relationship? Like, I'm beyond that at this point in my life. I'm 33. And and at this point, like, what is, what is loyalty? That's another thing that I evaluate. Reevaluate. That's the word I've been looking for this whole time. I've had to evaluate what loyalty, what loyalty actually is, over the past couple months. So, what I consider to be loyalty may be different than what somebody else considers to be loyalty. But. If we are friends, we are family, we are sisters, we, you know, homies, brother, sister, whatever the relationship may be. If we on that level and you know what loyalty means to me, and I know what loyalty is to you, then we should have no problem. Like, if I say, you know, loyalty to me is not going behind my back messing with any of my exes okay cool now you may not feel that that's loyalty you may not have a problem with that but because i already expressed that to you regardless of if you don't have a problem with it or not if you know i have a problem with it it should never be done and on the flip side if i ever encounter one of your exes regardless of if you have a problem with it or not i'm just not gonna do it because it means something to me. Um, loyalty to me means being present for things that are important to me. You may not feel that birthdays are that important to you. But if you're supposed to be my sister, you're supposed to be my brother, you're supposed to be my friend, then... Even if something was to come up... And you can't come to something that's important to me. Even though it may not be that important to you, being loyal to me means reaching out and saying, hey, I can't make it. I got X, Y, Z going on. Or just saying, I don't feel like coming, you know? But everybody don't feel that way. And I, and I get that, you know? I'm getting older and I'm just really evaluating a lot of relationships. And I have come to understand why I don't have as many people in my circle as I used to or as I used to want to be in my circle or that a lot of other people have in their circles. I just simply can't allow access to me like that. I cannot allow a lot of people have access to me. I'm not, you know, some super important mogul or anything like that yet. However, my energy is important enough to me that I just, I can't allow that many people have access to me. Because it really does hurt me when people don't, um, when people are disloyal or... don't take the same consideration for things for me that I would for them. And I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, okay? Um it really does hurt me when people don't take the same consideration for me that I feel like I take for them. And I have come to learn another thing that I have come to learn is that 
hurt is a matter of perception. I can sit here and tell y'all all day long, X, Y, Z hurt me. But if you don't feel the same way, if you've never experienced somebody hurting you from that point of view, you're only going to accept that and perceive that from your point of view. It's not going to mean a damn thing to you one way or the other because it's, it, it, you're not feeling that hurt. You're not feeling that grief. You're not feeling that pain. People only understand things from their point of view. I was having a conversation not too long ago with one of my friends, my sisters, my best friend, that she asked me, um, did I need closure on a certain situation? Because I was telling her I'm no longer putting myself in a situation with certain people to be hurt. And she asked me, um, did I need closure of the situation? And I told her, I don't believe in closure. I really don't. And I don't seek to get closure from any past situation because I feel like when you start to seek closure in certain situations, like I said, people are only gonna understand it from their point of view. And if they understood it to begin with, if they understood why it hurt you to begin with, they would have never done whatever the action was to hurt you. So they're going to feel like it's an attack. Um, you know, when you go to have the conversation to express to them why, you know, you're no longer effing with them or no longer friends with them or no longer dealing with them in that that capacity they're gonna you know when you go to explain why they're not gonna understand it they're just gonna feel like it's an attack and i'm not out to attack anybody so i don't i don't look for closure i don't look for closure i don't believe in closure for that reason and now i could be 100 percent wrong in the ways i think about this and I could be really, really missing out on a lot of great relationships. And I understand that. However, I'm also not sitting around getting my feelings hurt. And to me, that's more important. I'd rather miss out on all the great relationships in the world than to sit back and get my feelings hurt. Um, you just get to a point, you know, where you're tired of getting your feelings hurt. You're tired of being that person for everybody that they can run to and talk to. And, you know, and you're always trying to be there for people. And you're always on for everybody else. But when it comes time to be a one for you... People don't show up in the same way. You get tired of that. And like I said, I'd rather be missing out on all those relationships than to continue to put myself in that position. You got to look out for yourself first at some point. You know, looking out for other people is great. But at some point, you got to look out for yourself. And it's not being selfish. I, I guess it is. But maybe we should just take the negative connotation around selfishness out. Because sometimes being selfish is beneficial to you. Being, Of course, that's the definition of selfish. But um, being selfish is necessary to your well-being. Maybe I should say it that way. Sometimes being selfish is necessary to you and your health and, and your good good standing. Sometimes being selfish means the difference between you being able to continue being there for other people and you completely falling off. Sometimes that's why you need to be selfish is that so that you can continue to be there for other people at some point but you gotta look out for you first and that's all that means we gotta stop putting a negative connotation around selfishness selfish is good 
at some, you know, as long as it's not hurting nobody, you're not taking nothing. Like I would never be selfish with my child. That that's not that's not healthy for anybody. I would never be, you know, selfish to the point where I'm taking something away from somebody else. That's not what I mean by being selfish. But selfish with my time, selfish with my energy, absolutely. It's necessary. Absolutely necessary. But yeah, we're going to, um, and I know I asked y'all, do y'all do this? Do y'all take uh, a reevaluation of all your relationships? But I think you should. If it's not something that you've done previously, I really think that you should take the time out at this point before the end of first quarter. So before the end of March and really evaluate your relationships and just think, you know, how is this benefiting me? Are we making each other better? Should we continue? Like we do that professionally all the time. If you have a mentor, you take time out and you evaluate where you are in your mentorship. You take time out and you make sure that it is still benefiting the both of you, both as the mentor and the mentee. You need to do that in your personal relationships. You would do that with a job. When you start looking for a new job, it's because you've evaluated at some point that this is no longer beneficial for you in the company. You have taken an account at some point that it's time for you to move on or somebody did it for you. Either you took that, that time to take that consideration out or the company did so you need to do that personally too. You need to really sit back and evaluate are the relationships as beneficial on both sides as they need to be? Is that person pouring into you? Are they there for you to talk to when you need somebody? Are they helping you overcome your day-to-day -day struggles that you may not personally know how to overcome by yourself? But that is what I'm doing right now in March. And I'm telling you, you might not like the outcome. You might not like what you find once you start evaluating your relationships. Because I can guarantee you, like I said before, you're going to find a situation where you're holding on to a relationship just for the sake of holding on to a relationship. You're holding on to a relationship just for the sake of loyalty. But you don't even know what loyalty is to that other person. That other person doesn't even know what loyalty is to you. You are going to come across it and it's going to hurt. It is going to be painful if you decide that this is a relationship that you can no longer continue. If you decide that this is something that you are no longer going to be a part of, it is going to hurt. And especially when it comes and it's that, you know, you got your good, good girlfriend. That's your ace. That's somebody, you know, that's your day one. That's somebody you never thought you would be breaking ties with. Like, that's your girl. That's your rider, you know. That shit's going to hurt like no other. Because you you really don't want to let that relationship go. You really don't want to sever that tie. But if it's not beneficial, what are you holding on to it for? What are you holding on to it for? If it's not serving you, it's not serving them, what are you holding on to? That's what I'm challenging each and every one of my subscribers to ask yourself. What are you holding on to? Now, some of y'all might believe in closure. And it might take that for you to be able to actually sever that tie. You might actually need to have a conversation with that person and say, hey, we need to talk. I don't see this going nowhere. You know, how can I help you be a better friend? How can you help me be a better friend? What can I do for you today? 
you know, take some of that I out of it. Say, you know, how can I help you? What, well, how can I be a better friend to you? What can I help you with today? I was having another conversation with one of my good, good girlfriends, somebody I had not talked to in months. Now, this is another thing. Saying that something isn't beneficial to you doesn't mean that this is somebody that you have to talk to that person every single day. And that's how you evaluate whether or not it's beneficial. Unless it's what you need. Now, if it's what you need, it's somebody you can talk to every single day, then, you know, that that's on you. But I don't need that. I don't need to talk to my mom every single day. Matter of fact, I barely talk to my mom every week. But my mama know I love her. But back to my story. Um, talking to my good, good girlfriend. Hadn't talked to her in months. And, um, you know, we were just talking about relationships and our friendship. And what we expect from one another as a friend. And she made a statement. More goals, less gossip. Honey. When I tell you that sent me in. Like that was a praise break right there. When she said that to me. She said more goals, less gossip. If I can't talk to you about my goals if you can't help me set new goals, if you can't challenge me as a friend for me to look at you and be like, damn, my bestie doing that. Why ain't I doing it? I don't need you as a friend. And that's, that's point blank, period. I don't need somebody that I can sit up, that I can sit up on, on the phone and talk to about what... Kiki down the street doing every day and the problems that her her man going through. I don't need somebody that I can do that with. I'm beyond that point in my life. What I need is somebody who I can call on the phone and be like, girl, I'm looking for a new job. I'm looking to switch careers. This ain't working for me no more. And she can be like, okay, well, what is it that you're trying to do? Boom, let's put a plan in place. Let's let's look at, you know, what are you good at? Let's look at your strengths and your weaknesses. Let's get you some certifications. I'm going to a seminar next weekend. Do you want to go? I'm getting ready to learn about this new um this new method on to to trade forex or Whatever it may be, whatever that you identify your strengths as, you know, somebody that's going to push me to my next level to just be a better person, to set my son up for something better, to set me up for something better, my grandchildren up for something better, you know, more goals, less gossip. That's what we are. But sis said that and it sent me in and... That's what I mean by being beneficial. That's what I mean by reevaluating relationships and making sure that it's working for both parties. Because on the flip side, I also need to be able to pour into you. If you can't come and talk to me about whatever stage it is that you're in in your life, and I can help you through that stage, if I can't help you through that stage, or at least give you some advice. What what kind of friend am I to you? You know? I'm no good to you at that point. Why, why are you keeping me around? And here's the thing. You got to be ready for people to let you go at the same time you letting everybody else go. That's the, that's the other part to this is that you definitely have to be able to take it in the same token that you've given it. Because if you can honestly sit back and say you're not pouring into somebody, what do they need you for? If that person comes to you 
and tells you that y'all relationship is not beneficial to them, you gotta be able, you gotta be ready to receive that. You gotta be ready to take that. Now, if this is somebody that you feel is 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 existential to your life, is that a word? Is that existential word? I think that's a word. I hope that's a word, because I'm getting ready to use it. But if that if, if that person comes to you and says, hey, you're not being beneficial to me, but you feel like that person is quintessential, that's the word. If you feel like that person is quintessential to your life and you need them, then maybe it's just time for you to be like, okay, well, what, what can I do to be a good friend to you? Because I need you. And it's okay for you to say you need somebody. Even if it's a homegirl, a homeboy, somebody that you don't see, you know, it's not a romantic relationship. Everything don't have to be about, ooh, everything don't have to be about, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, love, marriage type stuff. If it's somebody who is a good, good girlfriend, one of your besties, and you feel like you need that person, that person's telling you, you serve me no purpose, you know, I'm not getting anything out of this relationship the way I feel like I'm giving to it. It's okay for you to say, what do you need from me? Hell, I feel like if some of the people that I let go of in my life actually came to me and was like, what can I do to be a better friend? Maybe they wouldn't be let go. I'm just saying. And it all goes back to something that I said in my very first video of the year, my vision board video about making people realize and remember that it is a pleasure. It is a privilege to f with you. Now, I'm trying to stop cursing so much in my videos. I'm trying to stop cursing so much in general. But you have to remind people every now and then that it is an absolute pleasure and privilege to f*** with you. Now... If you ain't got nothing going on with yourself, you might want to steer clear of this part because what's the pre what's the pleasure and the privilege? You got to be honest with yourself with this now. Don't be going around saying it's a pleasure to F with me and you ain't got nothing going on. Don't be going around saying it's a pleasure to F with me and you ain't doing nothing with yourself. You stagnant in your life. Like, don't don't sit sit back and be like, oh, it's a pleasure to F for me. And you still living on your mama couch with no job. Where's the pleasure at? Where's, where's the privilege at? What are you reminding people of? Because at that point, you only remind people that you ain't got shit going on. See, y'all made me curse. See, see. And I'm not judging nobody. I'm not, you know, trying to belittle nobody by any means. But it's 2020. And according to my YouTube analytics, we all grow. Because I look at who looks at my videos. And all y'all grow. Real grow at that. So, y'all grown enough to know what I'm saying right now. Now, if you get to a point where you are sitting back, taking account of your relationships and you're reevaluating things on a con consistent basis, and you find that you're cutting off more and more people every single year, that you have to continuously cut people off, that you have to 
continuously like do away with um, relationships. At some point, yeah, I know I just messed that up. At some point, you have to realize that it might be you. Because I'm not sitting here by any means. Am I sitting here saying that I sit here and I do this every year and I'm having to cut people off every year? Mm -mm. No, but it's necessary to at least look at it. But going back, if you um, if you are doing this every year and you're realizing that you're having to cut people off every year, the problem might be you. I'm going to just keep it all the way 100 with y'all. It might be you. Because it's either maybe you need to look at making some changes. Or you need to look at the people you're allowing access to you. Which goes back to my original statement earlier in the video. I cannot allow everybody access to me. I've learned my lesson with that. So if you're sitting back and you're doing this every year and you're finding that you're having to cut people off every single year, you're having to redo your friendships every single year, you're having new friends every single year, a different circle every single year, then yeah, you might be the problem below. It might be you. It just might be you. And that's okay. That's part of the work. That's part of the work. That's part of doing work on yourself. That's part of mental health is realizing that sometimes the problem is you. It's not always everybody else. Sometimes the problem is you. That's okay. If you can honestly sit back and say, you know what? The problem in this relationship is me. And like I said, it might be that you need some, you need, you got some things to work on, or it might be that you need to pick better friends. However, you figure out that the problem might be you. Being able, being grown enough to sit back and say, the problem is me. Hand clap to you. Applause to you because everybody ain't big enough. Everybody ain't bold enough to be able to do that. Now, I know some of y'all are going to sit back and be like, Well, what about being friends just for the sake of being friends? <laughs> That's where a lot of this lies. Honestly, is because, yeah, we can sit back and we can have fun. We're supposed to be able to have fun with our friends. We're supposed to be able to sit back and have fun with our family. But at some point, you got to get down to business. At some point, you got to get serious. And if the people around you aren't able to do that, aren't pushing you to be better in those moments when it's time to be serious, they're not leading you to where you need to be when it's time to get serious. I need the same people that I have fun with to be the same people that I can go to a business meeting with. I just leave it at that. If I can't go to a business meeting with you, if I can't sit in a boardroom with you, because at some point the way I'm viewing my life is the people that's closest to me, we gonna own some shit together. We gonna have, you know, a lot of shit in our names together. If I can't trust you in those moments to be able to sit in a boardroom with you, in a meeting with you, if I can't do those same things with you and still be able to go and get a section with you at the club or split a bottle with you, then I don't need you in my life. I need duality. I need com complete duality. I need for you to be able to do A and B. Not just one or the other. And those are the situations that I'm talking about. Yeah, we do have friendships for the sake of being, sake of having fun. 
But I also need for my friendship to be fruitful. Not just have fun. I need for my friendships to be supportive. I need for my relationships to be beneficial at the end of the day. Keyword, beneficial. I need for you to be able to lean on me. I need to be able to lean on you. I need for you to be able to teach me something. I need to be able to learn with you. Shit, we don't know everything. So I need to be able to learn with you. You might not have the answer and I might not have the answer, but shit, we gonna learn together, damn it. And I need to be able to trust you to learn with. You can't learn with everybody. Just like when you was in middle, elementary, high school, whatever, and the teacher would separate you from certain people because you couldn't learn with that person. That person wasn't beneficial to you. Y'all had to be separated because you couldn't learn together. Teacher knew what she was doing. So sometimes you had to play the role of the teacher yourself and you got to separate yourself from certain people because y'all can't learn together. And yeah, I really don't like working with glitter because this shit gets everywhere. But yeah, y'all, y'all have to, um, you know, really take into account of where you are, especially all my people over 30. And I'm saying over 30 because it's something that happens at 30 where all those relationships that you thought was going to be forever, all those friendships, all those love relationships you thought was going to be forever. It's something that happens at 30. I haven't figured that out. I don't have all the answers, you know. I haven't figured that out yet. But it's something that happens at 30 where those just go out the freaking window. They really do. But yeah, those go out the window. And I don't know about y'all. But I found myself in situations when I realized that that was happening. That I found myself in situations where people I never thought would have been a huge part of my life. That I never thought would have had any real, you know, real meaning to my life. Became some of the most influential people in everything that I do. They really became a part of my village. And those are the people that I don't have to worry about reevaluating on a yearly basis because I already know where we stand. I already know what's up. They've already proven their loyalty. They've already proven how beneficial they are to me. We know what's up. But it wasn't a, a one-time thing. They continue to do that over and over and over and over again. And those are the relationships that I die for right there, honestly. 100% every day, all day. Like, there's a saying that I've heard for a while now. Um, God brings people into your life either for a reason or a season. So, you have to evaluate, you know, who has fulfilled their reason. Whose season is up? I know a lot of people don't like to um, think about things in terms of seasons, but it's life. You know, everything has a season, and you have to move on when that season is over. 
I think that's that's the biggest um, takeaway from all of this is, is that season over? And if it is, then it is. Now, that don't mean you got to be beefing with the person just because you have come to the conclusion that the relationship isn't beneficial to either of you anymore. Nobody's learning anything. It's not going nowhere. That don't mean y'all beefing. And I think that's where a level of maturity comes in. It's like, you know, you got to be mature enough to understand it just because we not on the same level that we once was, that don't mean we beefing. I think some people don't understand that. Just because I don't rock with you in the same way, like, we just on two different playing fields at this point. I moved on to the big leagues, and you still, you know, pop Warner. But that don't mean we beefing. You can still come to my games, I can still come to yours type situation. We can still speed in the streets. But we just don't have anything to really talk about. And that's okay. You know? Realizing that there is no reciprocity in a relationship a friendship, let me put it that way, doesn't equal beef. But you gotta be mature enough to understand that. You gotta be on a level, a certain level to understand that not being invited to the table don't mean that we beef her. You gotta be at a certain level of maturity to understand that. Everybody don't have that. So that's something else you gotta evaluate too before you just start going cut people off. Is somebody gonna go crazy on you and show up at your door because you told them we ain't friends no more? You gotta think about that too. Be safe out here in these streets. Now don't just be going cutting people off all willy nilly and they gonna go crazy on you. Be safe now, be smart. About your, your cuttings offs. But yeah, that's that's why I don't have too many so called friends. And the friends that I do have, like, I'm not worried about any of my real friends like watching this video and being like, well, damn, I ain't thought of her. And, X amount of months, we must not be friends no more. Or, damn, I ain't come to her birthday party. We we must not be cool no more. I'm not worried about that because we already know what's up, you know? I don't have friends. I have family. I have sisters. I have brothers. Like, They already know what's up. So I'm not really worried about nobody watching this and getting in their feelings now. If you are my real friend, uh, somebody that I associate with in real life, and you feel some type of way about this, then maybe we do need to evaluate some things because I don't feel like I said anything that should step on your toes. But if we did, then hey, if you feel like I'm not benefiting you, by all means, let's have that conversation. Um, if you feel like you're not benefiting me, but you want to make sure, you want to check, make sure, let's have that conversation. I'm always open to a conversation, but like I said, I'm not open to closure. So, I just don't believe in it. Um, yeah, I don't feel like it, it has any purpose. But I could be wrong. So, you know... Let me know down in the comments if you've ever had to cut somebody off before and you feel like closure was necessary. And I'm not talking about a romantic relationship. If it's a romantic relationship, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a friendship, a platonic relationship. Even if it's between opposite sexes or, you know, what have you. 
um, if you felt like closure was absolutely necessary. Let me know why. Why do you feel like you had to have closure in that situation? Because I might look at I might be looking at things wrong. Like I'm not always right, and I know that. So you know, let me know why you feel like closure was absolutely necessary. So I'm actually going to end this video here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna keep going, and you'll see why. Um, no, this is not the finished product. You got most of it, but you ain't got all of it. So if you want to see the complete finished product, just keep watching because there is no part two. This is really the only video. Make sure you go ahead and jump on over to my next video, which is going to be Watch Me Slay this $75 Amazon wig. See, here's the issue. There was no slaying to that wig. It was absolutely horrible. Where I'm going to do the complete look. And I'm going to have my hair in oil, y'all. So you don't want to miss it. You definitely don't want to miss the end of this look because you clicked on this video because you want to see the whole look, right? You wanted to see me do the whole look. So make sure you go ahead over and jump on over to that video so you can see the rest of this look. And like I said, you guys, let me know down in the comments about how you feel about cutting off friends. Um, you know, how you reevaluate re your friendships and all of that. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all of that. If you like this type of content, and if you plan to go ahead and jump on over to that next video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click the subscribe button. You watch two videos, son. Two videos. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. You know you want to. Also, make sure you click the bell so that you'll know when I upload more greatness. But until next time, it's time to queen, y'all. Okay, so this is going to go by fast. I'm just going to put on some eyelash glue and mascara and then I'm gonna put on my strip lashes I've started putting my glue directly to my lash line instead of on the strips because I find that it sticks better and it lasts longer so once I have on my strips I should just be about done right about now okay so now I have my lashes on and then I'm gonna start doing my lips so I'm putting on a bright pink base, then I'm putting on my Fenty Red, and then I'm going in with this nice, lovely aquamarine color, and then I'm going to outline with black. So yeah, finish looks right here. Here you go. I did the best I could with this wig, y'all, but it wasn't video worthy, and I didn't want to bore y'all with me going back and forth with glue and got to be glued and trying to cut and dye and all that stuff. It just wasn't video worthy. And I love my Calvary too much to put y'all through that. So here's the finished look for my March babies. Eventually, I'll get a $75 Amazon wig that's worth a video. But this one wasn't it. So until next time, it's time to queen, y'all.